everyone, my name is Peter and in today's video I'm going to talk about uh, one cool feature of uh, new Google Analytics App and Web uh, which is called uh, Analysis Hub. So maybe you know uh, Google last year released a new version of Google Analytics which is called App and Web. Uh, this is still in beta so it's unfinished product but uh, it already contains some really interesting features that you can find in Universal Analytics and one of them is Analysis Hub. Uh, so in this video I'm not going to talk about uh, all the features and limitations, advantages, disadvantages of uh, new analytics, um, but if you are interested in that topic feel free to check out our ebook which is linked down in the description where you will find all this information. So this ebook contains all the known information that we currently have about this app and web so if you are interested in that, feel free to download the ebook and uh, have a read. In this video, I would like to focus on Analysis Hub. So Analysis Hub is a feature of App and Web. You won't find this in Universal Analytics. And it pretty much is a, is a space for all your more advanced analysis where you can analyze data more in detail uh, that you ever could in uh, Universal Analytics. And we'll show you what techniques you can use uh, there. So you can find uh, Analysis Hub here underneath the Explore tab and then here under tab Analysis and Analysis Hub uh, you can create a new analysis by clicking on this big plus sign and it will redirect you to this um, interface. So first of all let's talk about this leftmost panel. Uh, in this panel you have um, some basic information or basic um, data you are going to work with within the within your analysis. So you have uh, you know your name name of the analysis. You have a time frame you are going to analyze, and then you have a list of all the segments, dimensions, and metrics you are going to use in your analysis. The second panel is then dependent on the technique that you are going to work with. So in this case, we have uh, exploration technique, and that's the first technique I'm going to talk about. So exploration technique is really general one and it's mainly used for some basic data visualization. So um, you can get some basic insights based on those visualization about your data you are going to work with. So you can use that information later uh, in your analysis. It provides several uh, different visualization techniques. Uh, so one of them is simple table. Uh, there you have um, donut chart or pie chart, uh, the line chart, scatter plot, bar chart or uh, geo map visualization. So it's pretty straightforward. You, if you want to create a table, for example, you will just create. Um, you will just take one dimension from the left panel. So let's say we will use device category, and we will we will just drag and drop it. Uh, into the rows section here and it will automatically create a table for us. So in this case we are visualizing a device category and then the metric is active users. By default it creates a bar chart within the table columns or the cells um, but you can change that to a heat map instead so you will uh, see more significant values you can also add uh, several other dimensions to the table. So you can add a secondary dimension, let's say a country in this case. So you have in your first uh, column, you have a device category and the second one, you have a country, but also you can create a pivot table. So you can add that secondary dimension as a column. But this is a really simple visualization, uh, really, really similar to one that you can find in Universal Analytics. Uh, the other are pretty simple so I'm not going to talk much about those but I want to talk a little bit more about the line chart. So the line chart is also uh, pretty similar to one that you can find in Universal Analytics but it has one cool feature in it and that's uh, anomaly detection. So if I turn anomaly detection on uh, it will change the line graph a little bit. So let's talk about what we can see here. Uh, so the dark blue uh, line you can see is uh, actual metric value that was measured on that day. So in this case we are visualizing active users um, during the days. Uh, then in the middle of it, maybe you can see it uh, 
is a wide line, uh, which is uh, actually expected value of that metric for that day. So Google Analytics will take several days back, let, let's say 15 days back, and then based on the historical values, it will um, expect certain or predict a certain value uh, on a day. And based on the sensitivity we choose, it will also create this light blue area around that expected value. And once the uh, actual metric that we measured uh, hits outside of that area, it means that the anomaly is detected. So you can uh, change how many days uh, back should Google Analytics look at when, it uh, when, it's, when it's calculating the uh, expected value and also the sensitivity of this uh, animal detection. So if you choose higher sensitivity, the area will get smaller, obviously. So you can see, for example, in these days, uh, the Google uh, Analytics automatically spotted an anomaly. So this is really nice. I think it works much better than the alert system in Universal Analytics because you can also set up notifications for these anomalies for whatever metrics you want. Uh, so you will get notified if this is spotted. So it's a really, really nice feature, I think. Uh, next up is cohort analysis. So cohort analysis is pretty standard. Um, I'm not going to talk uh, too much about it. Uh, you can choose what criteria should be um, for the users to be included in the first column. So in this case, it's for session. And then you can select also what should be the criteria for the returning. So what when the users should be included in the uh, next columns. In this case, we have an event. So cohort analysis is very useful for um, understanding your audience a little bit better. Uh, to know how often uh, your users are returning to your page or how often they're doing certain actions. So for example, some transactions or any, any other conversions. Okay, next up is uh, funnel. So this is really a nice one. So uh, funnel analysis was only available for the paid Google Analytics 360 before, but now uh, it's available for all the accounts within the app and web interface. So in free universal analytics, you could also create a funnels, uh, but it had to be tied with the page views or with certain URLs. Um, this is not the case anymore. You can s define the funnels, whatever you like. So if you want to build a funnel, uh, you need to create the steps, obviously. So uh, by clicking here, you will be redirected to this uh, interface uh, where you can uh, create your steps and you can define the steps uh, pretty much on anything. So you can choose what dimensional metrics or events uh, should be there as a, as a condition. So in this case, I want to see uh, all the first visits on our website. That will be the first step. The second one will be block visits. Uh, the third one will be uh, scrolling. And the last one will be newsletter subscription. All right, that seems good. Let's hit and apply. Uh, and we can see it will visualize our funnel in a way that we are used to uh, from our e-commerce reports, from enhanced e-commerce, let's say, checkout report. Uh, it will s display all the steps and all the users that were in that step. So next up is a segment overlap. Uh, segment overlap uh, allows you to see how uh, se different segments uh, overlap with each other. So let's uh, just visualize it really quick. So let's say I have a segment of mobile traffic. I will add the segment to the visualization. It will display as a circle. And if I add a new segment, let's say uh, paid traffic, it will add a second segment to the visualization and will show up how those segments overlaps with each other. The nice thing is that I can um, mouse over these overlaps and create a new segment based on the definition. So let's say uh, I can, based on this, uh, I can create a new segment that will uh, contain mobile traffic and paid traffic. You can add up to three different segments. Uh, as you can see here, it also visualizes 
it in, uh, in a table form. So if you prefer that, uh, you have that option as well. The last analysis I want to talk about in this video is path analysis and it's super nice uh, rework of uh, the path analysis that is available in Universal Analytics. I always found the one in the Universal Analytics quite uh, confusing and I didn't really like to use it, but this one is much better, I think. So this path analysis allows you to see how users are navigating through your website. You can either define the steps as uh, events or certain uh, page paths. So in this case, we see, okay, first step of the session was uh, event session start. And the second one was page view, but let's say that we want to see what page they visited as a first page. So we can see that uh, 1,400 users actually visited our homepage first. And then when you click that, you can see where they navigated uh, from that home page next. You can also do this from the endpoint first so you can see how users navigated to that certain page. So let's say I want to see how users navigated to our ebook pages. Um, so you can see that a lot of them navigated through the blog posts or from our analytical vocabulary. So there are a lot of different ways how you can use this information. You can optimize the flow of the website. You can identify the most uh, common path user takes and optimize on that. All right, so that was uh, Google Analytics App and Web Analysis Hub. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something new. And uh, yeah, feel free to download the ebook if you want to know more about App and Web and how it works. And see you in the next one. Bye.